What is up Evil Dead fans? In this video I'm going to be talking about details on how to do an Army of Darkness style top and also how I do my Army of Darkness style paint. But before I do that, what I've been told, if I want more subscribers and more likes and shares and things like that, I need to make my videos a little more sexy and appealing. So we're going to give that a shot right now. Oh, look at that hard, thick wood. Somebody's filthy. Needs a bath. That's a rigid, hard, thick grill. Oh, that texturing looks moist. Oh, that top. Take it off. That top's a foot long. Yes, please. Oh, you give me goosebumps too, baby. In bad places. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, keep it going. Okay, I'm not going to do that again. That was weird. It made me feel very uncomfortable. So, the first thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at the top here. Now, I made a lot of videos on how I make tops, things like that. And... A lot of this bottom edge area is going to be inside the chainsaw body, of course. Uh, when it comes to the gap here. Now, I connected it together like how I make all my tops. Uh, Two-port epoxy and Gorilla Glue, things like that. And what I did is when I was bondoing it to give it a nice smooth texture. And you got to remember, if you've seen the museum photos, those tops are in rough shape. And he wanted a cleaner look, kind of what remember what he what reminded him of Army of Darkness. So I didn't go too crazy with it. But what I did is I took an X-Acto knife or a razor blade. And if you're going to do this, be very careful, don't cut yourself. And I actually etched that line, that separation line back in because... It's actually a welded piece. Now, this isn't welded at all. You can say, well, Brett, there's welds here. Well, they're not welds. Let me show you what I use for that. And I have talked about this before. But if you're new to the channel, you have no clue what the fuck I'm talking about. To make fake welds, what you get, simply this. Ultra Gel Control Super Glue. And it piles up like gel. It doesn't flatten out on you you make the weld look to your specifications of what you want <clears throat> you let it dry and that's what you come up with then you do your red paint of course then you do your weathering um <clears throat> excuse me for the chainsaw top and it gives that nice welded look now if you have uh, a top from another builder i know a lot of people are molding them and casting casting the ones that uh that they sell that are casted piece you can still do this uh, what you just have to do is just etch in that line be very careful you don't mess it up and do the same thing with the glue if you want that similar look if you're doing an army of darkness you paint it up you seal it with uh this has a a matte clear to seal it and then i added on the silver afterwards because if you add it on before it will turn matte instead of shiny and i always use martha stewart's uh, acrylic silver because it works so well it actually flattens everything out once you clear it but this one you can see there is a few bumps here and I left that on there because I just like that look I thought it was very uh, kind of gritty like it was somewhat beat up you know I want to still want those aspects on it but not to a crazy extent uh, when it comes to the inside it looks like duty right now so on the inside like I said it was Gorilla glued initially that's what I use to make the initial form. Then in two-part epoxy over the seams, as you can see some of it right here and right here. This brown doo-doo stuff is actually fiberglass. It gives it even more strength and it makes it a little bit heavier as well. Uh, but you can say, well, you're gonna scratch your hand on the inside. What I do, and I started doing this about a year or so ago, is I rubberize it. I use a rubber spray uh, when it's all put together, just spray the shit out of the inside of the chainsaw so it's all rubberized. So once everything's installed and it's put on, it will be nice and comfy. So there's the top. That's how I do the tops. Let's get to how I do the paint for the Army of Darkness style chainsaw. All right. 
I'm gonna try to get my camera straight here. Hopefully it doesn't fall off the stand because the stand's kind of shitty. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna talk about with this side is a few differences uh, on how to paint it. Now, for this inside area here, you will need a brush. It's just way easier, especially if you grime it up and grit it up like this. You wanna use a brush for that. Now, when it comes to the blotchy areas, you need to take the brush and throw it away or do whatever, clean it up. I don't give a shit what you do with it. Just do something like it. And this one had a brand new fresh paint job with the red. You'll notice here that there is no uh, paint up here just because I wanna match that up with the front side whenever it's fully completed. So that's why that part's not done. But if you look closely, it's not just black. There's different textures of different paints, different colors. And the nice thing is when this grabs dust and age, what it will do, it will actually lighten the paint up. And that's what you really want. And you can see it's very, very textured. And we don't, I didn't use sand, on, sand with it or grit. So this is a technique you can do without adding sand or dirt or whatnot. You can if you want, it's up to you. You know, potatoes, potatoes, you can. Um, also with this one, it, uh, it's a very simple process. Just a very simple process. Again, Chris Pollock's grill, love it. Love that grill, it's really, really cool. There's a lot of grill makers out there and every one of them does an amazing job with what they do. Uh, I've seen Jason Smith from Nightmare, Nightmare Props make one very similar to Chris's. Did a pretty damn good job with it, and I told him that. But going back to the different colors here, it's just not black. You can use just black if you want. But, but, when you're done with this process, you don't seal it. You just let it, let it be because you want it to age. You want it to get lighter in color, and you want that dust to gather, gather up. Now, you can say, well, why don't you just do the dust look right away? Well, maybe I want to clean it at some point. Maybe I want it to be dusty. Maybe I don't. So that way, you can constantly change the look. If you're going somewhere and you want a little bit cleaner, what I do suggest is take a clean brush and just brush it away. So you're not fucking with any of the paint. You just brush it away with a clean brush, the dust that you don't want on there. So you can have whatever look you want. So that's why I suggest not to seal it. And you can say, well, how do you get the paint from not smearing or doing anything since you work with acrylics? Now let's put this aside. And we got a clean side right here. This is one I got from Chris Pollock. This is from a Little Red or a um, Super 2, don't remember. Only big difference is everything else is accurate to that piece, except this eye lit hole is way too freaking big. Uh, back to this real quick. The Army Darkness chainsaw. If you look at the museum photos, the pull string actually had a knot in. You see how big that eyelet hole is in comparison? So if you want that look, you will have some trouble because of that giant eyelet hole. So you might have some problems. It's a possibility. If you have a working pull cord versus a non-working pull cord. Non-working, not a problem. Uh, you can just have it hanging. If you have a working one, you will have some issues. So let's get to the paint. The reason why you don't need to seal it is you want the folk art. This is just black. It's multi-surface. You need the multi-surface. Don't get that indoor bullshit because that indoor bullshit cracks, wipes away when you clean it with Windex and shit. Just don't use it. It sucks. I hate that stuff. I hate that indoor paint crap for that. Multi-surface in this is satin. Don't go glossy. You can go with a matte finish if you want to. And what else I'm going to use here just to show you guys, for instance, is this bare brown. You can use a red. You can use a different color. You want to give different colors of texture uh, with it. And all you need other than that is one of these sponges, these weird fucking sponges. Now, you can see I've used this, and you can say, well, it's only one good application, and then you throw it away. No, that's bullshit. Because what you do, take your sponge, and you just cut the crusty shit off. And then, get as smooth as you want. I'll cut that off too. And this is just a demonstration. I'm gonna, not gonna get it accurate. So now, you have a different surfaced area. Get rid of all that little extra crap. And you want something like that. Or whatever size you want, really. So, we're gonna go over to paints. And we're gonna put some of the, the black down. I don't really care, this thing's just filthy. And like I said, it's just demonstration. So a little bit of black. 
And then, like I said, that other piece has a fresh paint job. This one does not with the red. This one's just the natural color. Um, and it's older than dog, dog shit. You add a little bit of black and whatever else color, and then you mix it up. I'm just gonna use the end of this brush because you want that look not to be pure black unless that's your desire. And lighten it up as much as you want. And you want a lot of it, but I'm just doing a demonstration, so I'm just using a little. Okay, so we're gonna move that to the side. We're gonna pull this over here, and I'm just gonna dab it over here and show you what guys what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this edge right here. So I go in here and I grab it with my sponge. As you can see, there's a bunch on there. If you get out, sometimes you need a little, you can have a little too much. You just dab it off, and then you just. If you've got a smudge like that, you want to wipe that off. That looks like shit. It just moved on me. Or you can just dab it again. And you can do it all over the place. Just, just depends on how you want to look. Thicken it up in areas. And basically, that's what you end up with. Um, like I said, you can do it however you want. You can use whatever texture or sponge you want. But as you can see how it's raised because you're getting air bubbles and stuff underneath it. So when this actually starts to dry, what the paint does, it's kind of confused. The paint's kind of confused because it wants to adhere, but it has an air bubble. So what happens is, and you got uh, just big chunks of the paint on there. So it dries like that. It doesn't chip off or anything like that. And you get a really cool look. And when it's fully dry, it will actually lighten up since you put that other color in there. You can actually use another color over top and just touch up little areas that you want to brighten it up. So that's really all you do when you want that look. So at the end of the day, depending on how you want it, you can come up with something like that. And that's what happens. And as you can see, this one's dry, it's focused here. Come on, camera, there we go. You can see it's gritty as shit. And it's areas are very, very close to that specific chainsaw. It was a kind of a pain in the ass to do. Um, this method is a lot of fun if you're just going for a general look, but if you're going for the accuracy, it is a pain in the ass. But that's it, that's really all you do. Like that, I would wipe that down and take that off and do it again. Not bad, but that's really what you do. And if you wanna add in these little areas down here and around and you can't get in there with the, with the uh, sponge, you definitely you wanna use a brush on areas like that. And if you don't like it, when it's starting to dry and you wanna chip away stuff, you can actually take your fingernail and just chip it off. And it'll get that look. See, and I do that too. Just if I have a little bit too much in one spot, I'll just take it off. I did that right there to get that proper, very similar line that that specific one has, or that marking. You can see the depth. So that's what you do, that's it. It's very simple, it's very inexpensive. Like I said, if you have a multi-surface paint, you don't need to seal it. And if you wanna clean it, I do suggest just using a clean brush. Don't wipe it down because I just, I just don't, because it kind of loses that luster of a look. Uh, if you want to do it with grit and make it look dusty right off the bat, and that's how you want to keep it forever, go ahead. That's, that's, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that if you like that look. So I hope this helped you guys out. And until next time, you guys stay groovy.